Sunday morning. Jack's quad died, <laughs> so I came back to rescue him. What's going on with your quad, Jack? Uh, well, I tried to go up this incline and it stalled up and now it won't start. It won't start? See if it'll start now. It's nice and wet now. So, <laughs> Jack, Jack tried to ride the dirt bike yesterday, but it was solid ice, and so, uh, is the fuel on? Yeah, it is. I can see it. Give it another go. Keep it going, keep it going. Give it gas. There you go. Get off the starter. Huh? Off the starter. Let it warm up for a couple minutes and then see if you can get out of there. Okay. How was the ride in the freezing rain over a couple miles? It was miserable. You were soaking wet. Yes, I am. All right, so while we're here, can you show us your dirt bike? We, no one's uh, really got to see that yet. What do you, tell not you take your helmet off so I can hear you. Okay. So this is the, the Honda dirt bike that Papa got for Christmas for me. And me and Papa have just been running around with it and it's how fast it's 125 it's a 125 f it's got the big the big wheels it's got the tall wheels on it and the longer rear swing arm it's a four speed it's pretty fun i've only gotten up to well i got up to third once but then it didn't really do anything because i was going fast enough. <laughs> We went out yesterday and rode, we, we should have did a video. We've got a little racetrack we built uh, down the lower pasture and it was treacherous. It was ice and the ground was all heaved up from the freezing. So I rode, I rode Jack's 125 and he rode the quad. Uh, and usually I'm faster on the dirt bike, but you crushed me yesterday because you had four wheels. Yeah, I, I, like, I was like half the track faster than you. So mama thinks that the only reason I got a dirt bike, got you a dirt bike for Christmas is so I had an excuse to get one for myself. Is there any truth in that? I think so. <laughs> there might be. Well, there'll be, well, uh, when we get a decent day, we'll, we'll take the drone and the camera down there. We'll show you our, our racetrack and, and all of, uh, we, ha we have a lot of fun down there doing that. All right, anything else you want to add? Nope. Can we expect a little Wrangler Star video this week? Maybe. This day. That's 12 volt, it won't shock you. So Jack's pretty much ran the battery down trying to start it here. So we'll put the charger on it so it's ready to go. Do you just put it on the metal or the top right here? Yeah, just clip it on. You, you've got the positive, red to positive. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, plug it in and to just verify That didn't happen. Yeah, that's right. It happens sometimes. What would happen if only one was plugged in? On these, if you sink them a little deeper, get them down in there, then they'll they'll clamp better. You don't have to put it just on the nut. There we go. And then grab the charger and sit it up there. Just verify that the light is on. It is on. Is it green or red? Charged. It shows charged, huh? Mm -hmm. Unplug it and plug it in again. both of them at the same time. Okay, well it'll just float on there and see. All right, looks good. Bit of a random video today, but I thought while we're out here, I'll show you, uh, we're gonna be doing some stuff on the adventure van very soon. Uh, the invert, got the inverter in. This is uh, Magnum Energy. They're actually built up in Washington. This is a really nice inverter. It's a it's an inverter charger. This is a 1500 continuous, I think it's pure sine wave. Uh, so that will supply power for the van so you can charge all of your devices, Jack. 
We've got, uh, I think I've got all the components put together. Is, is There's so many little things to try to get organized um, that you need to get, you know, for all the electrical and the wiring side of it. So I've got, uh, we got these guys here. And I'm going to have you help me do all this, Jack, so you can learn about how to do all this. So these are the really nice shrink tape connectors. And these things are really a good value on Amazon. We've got our, our little um, rubber lined clamps so we can hold all of our wiring looms and anything so nothing rubs. We've also got, you know what this is? What is it? And if you say straws, I'm gonna be ashamed. Uh, I'm gonna guess that they're wire insulators. Can you open, open that up there? Careful. <laughs> if you open it that way, what's gonna happen? They're all gonna fall out. They're all gonna fall out, we don't want that. Well, only one fell out. So the, this is shrink tape. Uh, oh. So for all different sizes of wires, so and you'll learn this. So when you make a wire connector, you heat this up with a heat gun or a torch, and it shrinks around and waterproofs the uh, the wire. So we got those. So, we so they're kind of like insulators. Yeah, they kind of. Yeah, actually, they are actually insulators. Oh, so okay. open that one. Up here. So these are yeah, these are, like you said, they're grommets. These are uh, for let's when we go through sheet metal uh -huh. with wires and such, and they're they're insulators as well. So. We, you drill a hole, you put the grommet in, and then when your wires or plumbing, whatever you go through, is protected uh, and doesn't get chafed on the side of the sheet metal, which will rub. If you, a wire running through sheet metal is a, is a problem waiting to happen. So that takes care of that. And then we got, uh, what's in there? Uh, those little clamps. And so we've got the, see how they've got the rubber on them? Mm -hmm. And they came with stainless steel fasteners. Really, really nice little kit there for off of Amazon. Those are stainless. But check this out, Jack. Can you tell me what this is? Uh, I have, is it for the shelves? Yes, look how it works. Is it the same as my grandparents, the ones that they have so that they kind of fold out? I think it's very similar to that. So what this is, we have two of them and they're stainless steel brackets. Hold them up sideways so you can, and show me how they work. So you just, I'm guessing you just push this down and then this folds Yeah, it so it would mount like this on the wall. Hold it just like that. So you just press this and then pull this up. Right, so this would be the, uh, the, our little eating table and that'll be just between our seats. So it will fold down by clicking that lever. It'll fold down and the little table will lay flat against the wall so it's not taking up any space. And then flip it up. When you want to use it, it snaps up. Isn't that clever? Yeah. We've got two of those. Our neighbors came over to borrow our wood splitter, so we're going to go get him hooked up. Can you me hand with that? Sure. Get your gloves on? Nope. I'll grab you. There it goes. So while we're out here, uh, several people have asked, how much firewood do you guys go through uh, in a winter? And the fact that we're home all the time, we burn, you know, a fair amount of firewood because we're keeping, the fire goes 24 hours a day. It's always, it's always going. So uh, what we have here is, this is the wood that we put up for this winter. And how much wood uh, per round do we have there, Jack? About two cords. 2.2 cords. So on the cordwood covers here, if you look, there's a little gauge on there that tells you if it's five feet high, which is what we have here, that equates to 2.2 cords. And if it's two feet high, you've got one cord there. So we've got, well, what do we have, eight of these? Uh, seven or eight. Let's go see what we've used so far. So we start with the ones in the back. And this is, why don't you stand next to that, Jack, so we can get the scale. This is what we've burned this winter so far. I would say that that is, what would you say? It's two and a half? Maybe, because I'm five, seven around there. Yeah, it's just under three feet. So how much, according to the thing, how much firewood have we used then? If it started out as 2.2, um, let's just say two, two cords. So. Probably half of it? Yeah. So we've probably burnt maybe, maybe 1.1, 1.2 cords so far this winter. So that's pretty amazing, isn't it? Yeah. We switched to recently switched to a uh, the Hearthstone was it Hearthstone soapstone soapstone yeah. soapstone stove, and we have cut our wood consumption by fifty percent, maybe seventy five. A lot. We would have normally a burnt. Uh, tw we would have had this burnt plus some with our old cast iron stove. Maybe we would have burnt like two of these. Already. 
One for sure. Yeah. So that's it. So I think we're in pretty good shape for firewood this winter, wouldn't you say? Yeah. I don't think there's any any risk of uh, of us running out. Unless we have like a really bad spring. Unless we have a really, really bad spring. What I found with getting wood is that you kind of have to pick and choose. Is it helpful to drop it on your toe? It was a very short distance and I'm wearing boots. Here, let me give you a hand, Jack. I got, I got a piece here too. Thank you. So here's the wood stove that, uh, go ahead Jack, put that in there. This is a wood stove that I was telling you about. The, this is the soapstone. Soapstone is uh, really a, an a incredible wood or a material because it, it uh, stores heat. So if the stove or when the stove goes out, it will radiate heat for hours and hours and it never gets so, so hot that at any time you could touch it. I mean, it's gonna, it'll hot, it would burn you, but it's not going to like, your skin's gonna, melt off when you touch it like a cast iron stove uh, this has been the one of the best things we've ever put in the home it's just saved us so much work by burning less firewood as well as it's a nicer heat it's a it radiates it's very warm it's not so dangerous and the my favorite thing is it loads from the side what we had with our old stove is that you uh we'd open the front and then of course you know a hot burning log would roll out you ever had that happen jack mm -hmm burn out on the ground and you know you're putting a fire out on your floor so it was just it was not ideal so having a wood or a stove that loads on the side like this is much better you can put long pieces in if you've cut them too long and they never roll out it's just really wonderful what do you like about it but over the other one um i definitely like that it doesn't burn wood as quickly because then i don't have to bring in as much wood the funniest thing is and mrs w ordered these dog pillows they're called the cozy caves <laughs> so the dog can get inside. So what we originally ordered them, we ordered a great big one for Lucy, and we ordered a little tiny one for the Heart Racer. And of course, the Heart Racer is the rules of roost around here. She took the big one, and poor Lucy was curled up on the tiny one. Yeah, and the thing is, Lucy's just the nicest dog, so she won't do anything about it. She won't challenge the Heart Racer. So we had to. We tried everything to train them to. We put the Heart Racer in the little one, and then of course she would be on the big one and Lucy would be on the little one. So we had to get two big ones. And even for a time, for some, what a bit, Heart Racer had this crazy ability that she was able to have both of them. She was scared Lucy from using any of them. Yeah. And now they're, they're, they have their own, but of course Heart Racers is the one that's closest to the stove. But the cutest thing is the colder the day in the morning, the deeper she gets inside of that. Yeah. Sometimes I wonder where she's at. She comes up missing and I open it up and she's in the clear, clear in the back. At the end of yesterday's video, I told you I wanted to share a personal story, kind of a struggle that I had that was very similar to the story I shared with you about my friend Jim and the, and the laundry. And upon, ref you know, I was thinking about that and how I wanted to say, I didn't, I don't want to get, didn't want to get into all the details and, and to violate um, our personal privacy. Um, and I don't know how to tell it without doing that. So, but I, I do want to touch upon this and, and cover this area, uh, cover this topic. And I think what it comes down to is relationships and the relationship between um, husband and wife and how we can fall into complacency with our roles. Remember in the story of Jim, how he felt about, uh, well, this is, I am the, I'm the breadwinner and, and I'm doing these important things and I'm running this real estate business. I can't be bothered with the, with the domestic, uh, trivial, tri trivial domestic duties that these things fall upon my wife. And, you know, and rightfully so. I mean, if you, if you do have, have a traditional home, well, we, we have a tr very traditional home that, that uh, we don't share all the workload with everything. Um, I have my responsibilities and Mrs. W has her things, one not being more important than the other. Because without her support, without her working in the background, um, I wouldn't be able to do to do anything. Um, so we, th I'm not saying this is right or this is the best way. I'm just saying that this is how we run our family. Now, with that being said, it's easy to get entrenched with these things, and it's easy to 
to maybe turn to turn a blind eye to the difficulties and the monotony and the struggles that um, that your wife may be having with these things. And so, what one thing you know, as the Holy Spirit spoke to Jim, and and that that, that was uh, something that um, uh, he responded to. Um, we also, as uh, definitely as husbands, need to be very responsive to this because, you know, God invented marriage. He likes marriage. He likes the relationship between a man and a woman and understands that it is the foundation of society. And it's also the closest education that we can get of a relationship between us and God is the relationship between two people who love one another. And so if he created marriage, um, he probably has a lot to say about it and could give us some very helpful advice, right? And we've all received that advice and I guess the tricky part is, are we responding to it? So what, what happened to me, how do I, how, I, I, can't, I can't get into all the details, is that there, there was something that was um, Mrs. W's personal area of responsibility in our family, and I could see that it was becoming a great burden to her, that she was becoming beat down and, and very tired, and, and she never once complained about it and, and never, never asked uh, for sympathy, but finally, after I could see that this was becoming a problem. And so what I did is I, is I, 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 took, upon, I took this burden upon myself for just a short amount of time. Um, and what I did was not noble or, or great or anything. It was something that should have been done a long time ago. But I gave her a relief from this for, for 12 hours. And it made a, a, such a huge difference. And the reason why I did that, I didn't want to do this either. And I resisted it and I fought it for a long time. And I j- made I made excuses and I justified it in my own mind. Like, well, you know, we all work hard and we all have to make sacrifices. But God really spoke to me about this and said, you need to, you need to, you need to, to be sensitive to, to your wife. And, you, and, and she needs a break from this, even if it was just for a short amount of time. And, and, and I did that. And against my will, I did it. And it was, it really opened my eyes to how much it meant to her. So, you, you know, the, 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 I guess the thing that I want to, to, to tell to you, you guys that are married, especially you young couples, I mean, the guys that have been married forever, you, I'm not telling you anything you don't know, is that um, let God um, um, give you advice as to the needs of your wife. Uh, sometimes you can tell when your kids are running around and, and things are stressful and, and she's just at her wit's end and, and she's trying to keep the house going and there's been struggle after struggle after struggle. And they, you, I, I've seen it in, in her eyes before. I, I've seen it where the idea of making another meal and, and the kitchen and the dishes and everything that goes by that is just a good, about to push her to the, to the breaking point after all of the things that she had to do through the day. So be sensitive to these things. And if you can alleviate her, her difficulties and live, alleviate her, her um, struggles um, by just small acts, sometimes it's a good idea just to say, you know what? You're not cooking anything tonight. Jump in the car. We're going to go. We're going to go into town and, and we're going to have pizza, right? <laughs> we're going to get you out of here and, and, uh, or, uh, or I'll, I'll jump in and, and Jack and I will do the cooking and, and we'll do all the dishes. I want you to sit here. We're going to make you a cup of tea and just sit on the couch and just enjoy yourself and just take a break, you know. And and the the funny thing about it is, you know, when you it, it is the more you do, the more you get back. You know, the what is the the good book says? Cast your bread upon many waters. You know, it's for so many of us, if we think that well, we, we if we have something, we have to hoard it, or we're going to have less. But God works differently. He he shows us time and time again that it, those things, if we think that we can't live without, if you give them away, whether that be time or or money or or possessions or whatever, that uh, nine times out of 10 or 99 times out of 100, they come back to you tenfold, 50-fold, 100-fold. You just can't outgive God and you can't outdo it. And when you when you take that principle between the marriage, between a man and wife and husband and wife, by continuing giving of yourself, giving of your time, well, the other person will start to reciprocate that as well. And pretty soon you get to a point where it, where you you are having to be very clever to to be able to outdo the other, and and it builds love, and it builds it builds respect, and it builds a strong relationship, and it, it takes away all of so much resentment and that those miserly, petty, selfish thoughts um, that come to us. The more we react and respond to the urging of God to to put our other 
other people first, um, the more it will become a habit and the happier your life will be, the happier your relationships will be. And uh, try try it. Just test them and see. Uh, and uh, I'll tell you that it will be. It will be just as I say. All right. Well, that's all I had to say today. So uh, I've got a video. What's been the little video that I've been playing in the background here is one of my favorites, uh, and I'll put a link to that. It was the scariest thing I ever did. My <laughs> good friend of mine uh, had a big tree to come down in the middle of a very tight, busy neighborhood, and it was my first attempt uh, at uh, topping a very large fir tree. <laughs> it almost ended in my death, but um, but God is good and uh, preserved me to to continue to. Uh, to, to go on another day, but I think you'll enjoy the video and I'll put a link right there. Click on the top left. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video.